Hi, I'm Tim Kelly and welcome to my studio. Today we're making something special for you, the new softbox user or new to studio lighting. Uh, we're going to start today using one 3x4 softbox and one reflector, both from Larson. That's what I use for all my normal work and the 3x4 is my standard main light. So today we're going to take a very simple approach and show you what you can do, what you can accomplish, and the images you can create with one box and one reflector. So, let's get going. As I do for most of my work, I'm going to be using, of course, a digital camera. A Canon 5D, which is making a 12 plus megabyte file, from which I can make about any kind of print at all. I usually like to use the longest lens, a zoom lens, which is a 70 to 200, and it's a 2.8 lens, but I'm usually operating about f11. I'll go through the uh, details of exposure as we get into our lighting situation. Also, we're going to do high key and low key, lit from left, lit from right, depending on the subject's need, you know, hairstyle, clothing, body type. So we're going to go over those things for you as well today. Softbox lighting is easy compared to many of the other styles. Parabolic and hard light, spotlight, umbrella. When we started doing softbox lighting, it was the early 80s, and softbox and reflector produced a very, very soft light. Learning to use it and still get dramatic results has taken a little time for many photographers. Uh, I've been through all these styles, and I've chosen to use softbox, and I'm going to show you how today to get dramatic looks as well as traditional and softer feels. A long time ago, I switched to Larson softboxes after using many other brands who can remain nameless, but the main thing that I liked about my Larson boxes was they were extremely shallow, depth was quite small, so I could leave them up and parked in my camera room all the time. Also, I found that the fabric didn't yellow like the other brands and therefore it kept the quality of light cleaner for a very long time. Now, in my studio, you may see other lights around and you may have seen other videos of mine uh, and you know that I use many boxes. Of course, today's lesson concentrating on the one is for the distinct purpose, purpose of showing you how easy it is, but I do use a four by six, a two by three, uh, a couple of strips, one for hair, one for kick, and various reflectors. Uh, just so you know that Larson products cover every need that I have and I hope that you'll be able to take this lesson and then add another light and another light as you are comfortable with it. The reason I love the light quality of softbox is because it really is a bounced, very diffused light source. Among my very favorite looks is the 100 plus year old North Light Studio, which was nothing more than diffused open sky coming in. And so multiple windows is really the look that I most want to achieve. And that's what we get with multiple large soft boxes. Now, can you do it with one? Sure, on one or two or three people. As you get into a bigger group or a bigger scene, you need more light, more width but we're going to go ahead today and show you how to get that quality of light with the one 3x4, which is really a medium softbox. And we'll be shooting a model in a couple of different backgrounds and clothing sets so that you get an idea of how you can do it. Inside of my softbox is Photogenics Power Light. I'm using the 1250DR digital remote, which gives me plenty of power. And of course, you don't have to have the DR, the digital part, if you're just using a, a light that you can get your hands on. But occasionally, you're going to have a light, such as a hair light, in a place that's difficult to reach, so it might be nice to have that kind of feature. Now, additionally, the most, next most important thing in our scenario today is going to be the reflector. And I'm using Larson's pop-up with a, a super white fabric on it. That is my favorite. Some folks have used silver. Uh, I don't have much use for silver myself or my style. I like it very soft. So I'm using the white. It has an easy to break down X-frame, so it's very easy to take with you. And it has a leg, 
so that it will stand on its own. And in my opinion, reflectors, the bigger, the better. We have our model present, ready to go. Katrina's here to help us today as we demonstrate the lighting of the one three x four softbox and reflector. We are complete in a complete set here that goes to the floor, though we're gonna emphasize the three quarter and headshot. Now before we start shooting, let's talk about a few basics. How many watts are in your light? I'm using about 100 watts and the distance, of course, is very, very important to me. With a three by four box from a single subject, I really like about 40 inches. So let's take a look at that spacing right here. This just, it would be just short for her to reach my fabric. This is the ideal working distance for me with a three by four and one or two people at a close shot. As well as the power and the distance we also have the pitch or the angle of light. A lot of people know from basic training that you're going to have about a 45 degree angle of light onto the face. That is still normal. I also like to pitch it down just a little bit to give that feel of a window light so it has a little bit of a, a down degree. But one of the big tricks that you're going to see from me today is the fact that feathering the light or using the edge of light is probably the most important component. One thing I do not do is aim the light at the subject. I aim the light past the front of the subject so that I can fill my reflector with light to work with, to bounce. For the demonstration, I have a basic work clamp light here to show how important the direction of light is. We're going to simulate that Rembrandt light that the softbox is making only softer with this lamp. So let's kill the main light and use this one in replace of it, replacement of it and put it into the normal position about 45 degrees off the face, 30 degrees down and we have a, a beautiful light. Let's go a little shorter still so we get that triangle patch under the eye which I love. That has a nice downward cast to the nose shadow. That's what we really want. Oftentimes, let's go square. Folks that use soft boxes, especially big ones, just let it come straight across the room. And it's a pretty light, but it's not the most flattering because the no shadow is going straight across. And it doesn't give you that beautiful triangle under the eye, the shadow eye. Then, sometimes when you do achieve a nice light, folks might add another person that's taller or have the person stand up without modifying the light enough. Let's put it down low where what often happens is we get this kind of a monster light where the no shadow is going uphill. I actually see this in, in photographers work all the time and though it is so soft you don't really feel that it's as bad as it is but it really is a terrible direction for the light. Let's go with a downward cast 45 degrees off the face and get a beautiful patch right there. In addition to the direction and the distance and all the things we've been discussing, we also have to be aware that the light has to follow the facial plane. So every time you change the pose, that main or the key has got to follow the face when that new pose takes place or your, your shadows are just going to go crazy on you. What we're doing is intentionally magnifying it by using this tiny little specular work light you often don't see the negative results when you're using a big beautiful window or a softbox. But here we're going to let you see what's really happening. So we have a perfect nice Rembrandt little triangle there. But if I want to change her pose and say Trina let's let's go down lower and drop the nose. Look at those eyes. We've lost the eyes. So with a little posing shift the lighting is destroyed. So what we'll do is let's take the light down and follow the facial plane Keep it 45 degrees off, a little broader to create that nice patch and watch that shadow go down right there and connect to the lip. She could even turn the nose a tiny bit. Beautiful. There it is. So that light has to come down. So if we come back up again, we get that light so that's 45 degrees and we've got a nice coverage on her face again. 
Now asking a three by four foot softbox to cover an entire scene, like you see it here, is asking a lot, but it can be done. You simply have to back it up and feather quite a bit and perhaps open up your lens, your aperture just a little bit more than you normally would. But what we've done for the video here, simply so you could see me and you can see Trina in the room, is we have a simple bounce light off the ceiling. You can do that in your photography as well. You can have an extra strobe to give you a little bit of extra fill. Uh, you can also use any other existing light, but we're gonna talk about how to get most of your design from the main light and reflector, but don't be afraid to use ambient light because what you're seeing here can be easily done, transposed, if you will, to a home session or wherever you like to shoot. Perhaps you don't have a studio. That may very well be. You may not use backgrounds, but you can still use this light box at this distance and get fabulous results. Before we start shooting, I want you to, to know that I'm at ISO 100 by choice. Because I'm shooting with studio lights, I want the maximum quality. Now, nowadays, ISO 200, 400, 800 is, still looks quite nice, but nothing looks as good as a slower um, film speed. So I'm choosing ISO 100. I'm shooting at uh, F8 to F11. I'll do my test and, and find out in just a moment. I'm using a, a radio trigger so I don't have any wires hanging on me while I shoot. And you'll get to see on the screen these test shots and of course all these finals as we tweak the lighting. So let's get started. All right, to get going here, let's discuss one last thing before we get into actually capturing images and dealing with the exposure thereof. The distance between the reflector and the subject will mimic the main light or the key light and the subject. So if it's about 40 inches, so is my reflector. The angles repeat. It's just almost a mirror image to get the simplest, best results. I've often seen people put the reflector on the opposite side of the main light, and I don't believe that's right, and I'm gonna show you why in just a few minutes, but let's keep it at a mirror position to the main, okay? Lastly, I'm not using a meter because today's digital I have a very good feedback not just with histogram but with what I see on the back of my camera for my test shots and guess what we are shooting raw as I recommend most people do so you can adjust the exposure later but there is something you can't adjust later and that would be the recipe the relationship of these elements in your image the main light and the and the reflector cannot be changed later. So that's why we have to get that right today. All right, let's actually do a few. She, the pose is great, so let's just go ahead and, and pull a few poses for Trina. Excellent. We'll see how that looks. Gorgeous. What we'll do, grab a headshot. That's the beauty of a zoom. Change one to the other. Let's do this on Just turn out of the light a little. You're good. And then just bring the hands way out further. Fall forward, forward, forward. Good. You, you try to stay up. <laughs> and then your nose towards my mirror that way a little bit more. Good. You okay? We'll just grab another shot or two. We're going to, in a moment, change to a different background, maybe a different uh, little garment change. Looks beautiful. Remember, this is just one softbox, one reflector from the same distance. I am happy with that. Show some teeth there. there, there. Okay. Well, let's do this. Let's take um, a little change of wardrobe and background and we'll get right back to you. 